Raspberry Pis are starting to become available again on the market. You can actually go out and buy one right now for a fair price. But there's still a lot of those other alternative boards on the market. Today we're going to check out another one from Big Tree Tech. Hello everyone, Chris here, and I'm always on the lookout for a single board computer. I find them fascinating, and I love to see all the different features that manufacturers bake onto them. And today we're going to be taking a look at one from Big Tree Tech. Now, Raspberry Pi has been integrated in 3D printing for a while. We usually use it for something like Octoprint or Clipper, but it has a lot of different uses. They can be very handy. And Raspberry Pi hasn't had a good couple of years. It's been really hard to get them. If you can get one, it usually was for a ridiculous price. Well, that's starting to change. You can go out on the internet right now and get them. They are actually available for a fair price. In fact, I just bought a couple of Zero Ws for $15 each. So definitely check it out. You can probably now get your hands on one. But still, there's a lot of these alternatives on the market for a very reasonable cost. The Big Tree Tech one on Amazon right now only goes for 36 bucks. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna check out the Big Tree Tech Pi, take a look at the hardware, see all the different components that they used, check out the software and get it up and running so you can use it on your 3D printer. So let's start by checking out what's in the box. So here we go. Now, of course, I had to open this before the video, but you're gonna get the Raspberry Pi in a static free bag, all that good stuff. I had to open it up and see what it was all about as soon as I got it. But here's the Pi board. You'll get a heat sink that should span over the memory and the processor. We'll put that on here in a second. You're gonna get a Wi-Fi antenna. That's one thing about these boards from Big Tree Tech. The other boards don't have, it does have integrated Wi-Fi. A lot of the other ones, you have to use a dongle. Of course, you get a sticker. And we do have a cable here. I'm guessing that's so that you can integrate some GPIO pins for your accelerometer because they do market these boards to run Clipper. So you're gonna wanna do that. But there's a cable available. So the first thing you'll notice, this is the same form factor as a Raspberry Pi. So in any case you might have mounting holes, it's gonna be exactly the same. We have an H616 all winter chip. So that's an ARM chip. We're going to run something like Armbian, Debian. Any Linux distribution is going to be able to run on this chip. You do get a GPU on this board. We really don't use it in 3D printing much, but it is there. A G31. RAM, we got 1 gig DDR3. These two chips right here. You do have an Ethernet port. This is 100 meg, so if you want gig, this is not the port for you. It'll still function just fine on most networks, but just know that. You have four of these USB 2.0 ports, no 3.0 on this one. You get your 3.5 millimeter audio jack. You get HDMI, the mini HDMI port. You have pins for an SBI display, so a touch screen, Big Tree Tech style. There's probably other screens that fit that port. And this one for your GPIO pins for your accelerometer, like we were talking about before. This one specifically designed for that ADXL345. Your standard 40 GPIO header, pretty much the same pin out as any Raspberry Pi. They do color code it, that's always nice. Input power is five volt. They list it at two amps. I would go with a Pi 4 adapter at three amps. It's not gonna hurt anything. More is always better with these. You wanna make sure you have enough power. You can also use these terminals over here as input if you would like. This would be 12 or 24 volts over here. So you can run it off your printer power supply if you have extra lugs. They do also have an infrared port. I don't know what you would do with your 3D printer. You could get really creative, but maybe you can use a remote control. I don't know. And you have a CNC controllable fan port as well. This is PWM. The last thing that's really important to note is you do have CAN bus on here. CAN is getting more and more popular. It's just another way to communicate with devices, things like tool heads, but it's integrated on the Pi. So depending on the configuration you have, you do have that option here. Always good to see. On the back of the board, we do have our Wi-Fi chip and a port there where you can use your antenna. I highly recommend you use it. They're really not much good without it. So while we're here, we'll go ahead and snap that antenna on. Notice our TFT slot. We will need some sort of SD card to run as a hard drive or drive for this so we can have our image put on here. We'll build that here in a moment, but that's where it will go. 
And then your heat sink, go ahead and put it on, but it's gonna go over your processor and your memory, just like this. So feature-wise, the Big Tree Tech Pi is pretty nice. I really like the fact that you can power it from your existing PSU with either 12 or 24 volt, or you can go ahead and use that five volt adapter like you would on a regular Pi if you wish. That makes it really versatile. As well as it has Wi-Fi integrated. A lot of these clone boards like this don't have that. You have to use a dongle that in turn uses up a USB port. It's all in one. But now let's move on to the OS. That can be somewhat questionable with these devices. Let's see what they've done here. As with most of these devices nowadays, we usually start on their GitHub. Here we are at Big Tree Tech. This is the repository for the BTT Pi. You can just search for it. We've got some information here. We've got different things we can do with pins, fans. They give you some details. So there is some info. It is kind of blended with multiple projects because they're talking about the CB1 as well, the smaller module rather than the Pi. They do the same things, just in a different form factor. But it looks like we have a dock for the fan pins, gives you some configuration options, and then we have our user manual. It gives you the lay of the land, which is good. This gives you the information. By default, you do have this J8 jumper on. That lets you use that 5 volt supply, like a regular Raspberry Pi would, through that USB-C port. If you want to use the terminal, just pull it off. So that's these terminals here, 12 or 24 volt. So that's good to know. Gives you a breakout of all your GPIO pins. Shows you the accelerometer pins they use there, SPI. As well as some screen diagrams, how those lay out. CAN bus. A lot of good information here. But the main thing I'm interested in is the OS distribution they're going to use. And they've given us a download link. So here are their releases for the CB1. Again, that's just a different module. It uses the same chip, just a little bit different form factor. It's going to work on the Pi version as well. Looks like they offer a minimal version or a light version. These are Debian 11, something close to Ubuntu, if you're familiar with that. And then there's a Clipper version. Note that Clipper version, 1.2 gig. I'm going to go ahead and go with the Clipper version because we want to see what they give us with it. If I was doing this, I would go with the minimal version and install everything myself with something like Kaya, because then you would know exactly what was on it. But going with the Clipper version, it might make it much faster to get up and running if everything is correct. So that's the one I'm going to check out. So we'll download this. We'll open up a Raspberry Pi tool. We'll go down to custom and we'll find that download we just grabbed. Here we are, and we'll mount the SD card that we want to use. I'm using a 32 gig. Anything over 8 gig should work. And we'll go ahead and write it. Probably a lot of the custom options you have down here aren't going to work. This is Debian. It, some of them might work, but it's really designed to use Raspberry Pi OS. So we're just going to write it, and we'll deal with it later. When our Pi tool has completed the image, we do need to set up some network settings for our Wi-Fi. If you want to use the Ethernet cable, you shouldn't have to do anything. You can just plug it in, but it will have to know your Wi-Fi information to be able to log in and grab an IP. So you should see a boot directory from your SD card, and you're going to have a system CFG file. I highly recommend you use Notepad++ to open these, because it's not going to mess with the syntax like regular Notepad would. There's a few settings, but the main ones we're interested in is for Wi-Fi. So just enter your Wi-Fi network name. Remember, these are always case sensitive. And then enter your password, whatever that might be. You can mess with time zone or host name, whatever you want to play with in here. Remember this big tree tech CB1, though. We might mess with that here in a moment. But for now, we'll just save this. We'll unmount the SD card and take it over to our BTT Pi. So I'll just mount my newly flashed SD card here in the back. And for this video, I am using a regular Raspberry Pi 4 adapter. This is the 3 amp style with the USB-C plug. Remember, this jumper is on, so we're using this port right here for power. If you take it off, you can use this terminal over there. 
Green light's on, looks like we got power, we should be booting up. Now this is always the tricky part with devices like this, when they join your Wi-Fi. It's for me to tell you how to access that after it boots up. How do you know what the IP address is? I always go to my router. You can see right here, BTT, CB1, it's only been up for less than a minute. I know that this is the IP. There's a couple ways to do this because not everyone has access to their router. You could use something like Angry IP Scanner, scan the network from your computer and figure out what that device is. Or if they set this up correctly, you might be able to use this name as a .local address, depending on how your computer is set up. We are going to have to use some sort of SSH tool to be able to configure things on our new Bigtree Tech Pi. So I like to use PuTTY. You can use whichever terminal you wish. But like I was saying before, if you don't have access to that IP, you saw that host name in the config file. It was set at btt-cb1. If your computer is set up correctly and your router allows this, you should be able to just add dot local on it and hit enter port 22. And it's going to bring up a login prompt. It's complaining about the key. Just go ahead and accept it. And then you should be able to log in. Default login for this one is BQ, B-I-Q-U. Password is the same, B-I-Q-U. And we're in. You can verify what you saw before, 192.168.132, same as it says in the router. So that's just one way of getting in if you can't find that IP. So since this is the OS that we downloaded that said it had Clipper on it, let's just have a look around. We're in the home directory. You can see that by the tilde. That's usually where Clipper is going to be installed. So let's just do an ls to list that. We have Clipper, Crow's Nest for all the cameras. Clipper screen is already there. And so is Mainsail, the front end, as well as Moonraker to help tie everything together. So this tells me that the environment is already set up. We should be able to just go ahead and go to Mainsail, the front end. So if you open a browser, Again, if the local address works for you, you should be able to just type in btt-cb1.local. And here we have an instance of mainsail. So all the basics have already been set up. If we go to machine, you can see printer.cfg. They just have the bare minimum in here. But this is an environment to get you started. You can plug in your printer and then start building your configuration file. So this definitely gets you kickstarted in building your Clipper setup. Now from here, you would definitely have to go to Clipper. So we'll just CD into Clipper and make your configuration. So make the file that you need to flash on your printer's main board to be able to talk to it from this Clipper install on your Pi. So you just do the usual make menu config You'd select all your parameters for your main board, what microcontroller you're using. Most of them you're going to see are going to be STM32s. F103 is a very popular one. In the guide that they give you for this Pi, they're actually referring to the Octopus board. These are all the parameters you'd use for that board. But remember, every board is different. You have to use specific parameters for that MCU. So consult either the internet your manual for that board, or there's a lot of good configs already out there on the Clipper GitHub. I've showed that many times, it's available, but again, this is a great start. But once you're happy with that, you can just do a quit and do your regular make clean, and then just do a make to compile it. So getting set up with that OS image on your Big Tree Tech Pi is very straightforward. Pick which image you'd like, Clipper or the light version, flash it to your SD card, you have a few settings to get the Wi-Fi set up, and then you're good to go. Now you do have to go back to Big Tree Tech for the OS, we'll touch on that, but you can use this for anything that runs on Linux. If you want to run Octoprint, it doesn't matter if you have a completely separate project, it's going to work just fine. And the performance on it should be pretty good. Pretty much like a Raspberry Pi 3B would be. Also, if you want to run Clipper, all you have to do now is go ahead and plug it into your printer, configure it like we just did, you compile it for that MCU, 
and this will be a direct replacement if you already have a Raspberry Pi or if you're doing a new install. Now, if it were me, I would install that light version of the OS and use something like Kaya to get my Clipper installed. It's very straightforward. Plus, if you've used Kaya, then you can start doing multiple instances on this Pi if you want to run multiple Clipper printers off this one single board computer. That could be really handy, and that will also help you get things like camera set up, as well as Moonraker if you want to use mainsail and fluid. I think Kaya is just a lot handier tool. Check out all the video links in the description for all of that. But now let's check out a few more things. So with any distribution like this, I just like to take a look around. The first thing I usually do is something like a sudo apt update, just to make sure the repositories are correct, they can get to them. It's going to be able to update it from that Debian release. Everything looks good there, it can get to the repos, and then go ahead and do an upgrade. It shouldn't hurt anything, we just want to make sure we're on the newest versions of all of this. It might take a minute, it's going to go through and download a bunch of stuff, it's going to ask you if it's okay with it, and we'll just hit yes. So everything's up to date, I just like to look around at the hardware, again, I kind of like Linux command line, not everybody wants to do stuff like this, but you can do ls cpu, display everything about the processor, you can do free dash m to check out the memory usage df dash h display the file systems see how it's configured or you can always just do a top top gives you some performance details up here cpu percent we're running very low that's always good but it gives you a list of all the things are running how much time they've been running memory at cpu if there's something going on on your Pi, this is a great command to run to try to figure out what's using up all the resources. You can control C to exit. If you're really nerdy, you can install some fun stuff. Let's just do a sudo apt install space SL. And then when you have that installed, you can just do the SL command. And then you have your own steam locomotive. I don't know what you call fun, but I think this is a riot. And I know we veered off of 3D printing a lot here, but this is just getting you used to Linux. You can use this for any project you want. And remember, it's only 36 bucks. You could also go the Octoprint route. And if you do, I highly suggest again, you use Paul's script. We did a whole video on this, but you can just pull the script down, Octoprint deploy from GitHub, then kick off the shell script. We'll prepare the system. We're running one Debian. After the setup's complete, it's time to create our first instance. Let's just call this one BTTPy. And once the script is complete, it's detected your printer. You can head back to your browser. Go to the same IP with your port number from Paul Script. There's Big Tree Tech Pi right there. We're ready to go ahead and configure Octoprint. So there's lots of things you can do with your new BTT Pi. So there it is, the Big Tree Tech Pi. It's a versatile little board that has a lot of great features. If you're running it with Clipper or your Octoprint environment, it's gonna work great. Pretty much anything in 3D printing we use a Raspberry Pi for, it's gonna be able to step in. Also, it just runs Linux, so anything that will run on Linux will probably run on this hardware, if there's enough performance there, depending on what you're trying to do. Now, the Raspberry Pis are available again, but this one is only $36 from Amazon. So if you're looking for a replacement or you can't get the model you like, this might fit the bill. But remember, Big Tree Tech is furnishing that OS, that distribution of Debian, and they have to give it to you. You can't just run any default OS on this, not yet anyway. It would be better if they would share that project back so that we could get it integrated in the actual distribution so you could download it from the project itself. You're not dependent on them because if they stop offering it or they stop making this pie, it's not going to work any longer. So keep that in mind. So hopefully you found this helpful. That is it for today and I'll see you really soon on the next one.